Okay, part of the disassembly of the pump and the ceiling is this top cover. I never covered that when we pulled it apart, but we'll just run through it um, now. And I'd, I'd like to point out a few things. Now, if you have a pump that's leaking out of either of these two shafts here, which is a, a common occurrence, so normally, normally on the pump, that's the block side, and you'll see it'll run down the back and come around the pump and drip off sort of thing. So um, all you need to do is lift this top off, undo the spring underneath that we spoke about earlier, and you can take this off on the bench and nothing else has to happen to the pump. This can be a stand-alone stand job on its own. So I thought I'd just cover this piece um, as a little seg segment of its own, pull apart and put together of its own. So a couple of things to note here, on your stopper, your stopper just moves that cam there, so um, when it's pushed back down like that, it pushes the metering valve shut. On your throttle, when you pull your throttle on, pull the throttle, it puts tension on the spring on your governor and makes it work. That's all that's under this top cover. Now, a couple of things I'd like to point out on this. Uh, on your maximum fuel screw, so this screw here, that limits how far this lever can travel and how far we can actually pull the governor on. So if you want to get a few more revs out of your tractor, you don't get any more power really, but a few more revs, you can open this screw up and give yourself a few more revs. Now this screw here, that's your idle speed. So, and you can see this one's sloppy. So on the, on the maximum revs, um, on your high idle, you'll notice there's a screw and a lock nut and that that is quite firm. Someone over the time has been in here buggering around and they've taken the lock nut off this idle speed screw. So what's happened as the time's gone by and the engine's idling away and buggering around, you've got it wide open there, here's this screw slopping around like a cock in a sock and wearing the thread in the housing. Now. It feels like we can pull that thread out okay, but we do need to put a lock nut on that and you can see the thread on the screw there is quite worn, so we'll probably replace this screw and put a lock nut on it, but we'll leave it loose until it's on the machine and we can actually adjust the high or the low idle, that's the low idle. The other thing on this pump is if I hold this firm under there, you can notice you can notice that. So the shaft's not moving, that means this nut's come loose. So they probably weren't getting full throttle anyway, and you got all that movement there with nothing happening, so um, the throttle would probably feel quite rubbish on this. So I'll just check if it's tight. Oh, look, that nipped up. So that's just come loose over time. Okay, so anyway, for the moment, what we want to do is undo the screw. Doesn't matter which order you do these in. You have a nut and a shake proof washer. And look at the rubbish under there. And the reason that was sloppy is that's a dust seal is when we pull the shaft out there's a flat a couple of flats on the shaft I'll try and keep it in focus so so when it when it um, comes loose it actually slops around like that so that looks like this one will tighten down okay once we clean it up. This being the throttle shaft, if it's leaking down the throttle shaft, you have two O-rings here. There's one just here. Now you can buy a kit, that was that tight, that brittle it broke. You can buy a kit with just the O-rings and the top gasket in. You don't need the full kit if it's just leaking out the top cover. I probably should do a video just on that on one of my tractors just to, just to show. So that's your shaft, you just end up with a bare shaft. 
This high idle screw can stay there. We, we have no reason to believe that's not in the correct place. Um, when we sandblast it, we'll tidy it up. And on this stopper screw, it's the exact same setup. You have a nut, a shake proof washer. See, I stabbed myself with my O ring pick. Bloody hard to get good help. So we have the stopper, the little dust seal to try and keep the dirt from getting down in there, and and the stopper shaft. The stopper shaft here has the same O-rings as on the throttle shaft, so we just get rid of those. Well, I'm going to take this top cover away and bead blast it up, tidy it all up, get all the rubbish out, give it a good bath, wash all these bits and pieces, get rid of all this dirt, and um, yeah, I'll come back and we'll just assemble this top cover. Okay, I've been away, I've cleaned this up, look at that, it's just bloody beautiful. I didn't pull this screw out, we can adjust that later if we need to, but in the kit, you'll find four little o-rings and they're a, they're a little shiny silver one for some reason. I don't know, it looks like a graphite covering or something like that on them. But look, all you need to do is just grab a little o-ring pick, work it down over the shaft into the grooves. If I can get that down there. everywhere but where I want it to go but anyway I'll get good at me bloody job soon okay so that's down into the bottom groove that's just a bit of lacquer there um, there's an o-ring groove then there's another little groove to stop rubbish getting through I think and then the top groove so we bring the second o-ring down Hold him on the one side and pop him down over. So there you go, there's your throttle shaft. And what I like to do is just pop a little bit of oil on that just to help the O-rings in. Now your throttle shaft, it's the one that goes with the throttle adjusting screws. If you've got yourself muddled up, don't be too worried. And that just pops in there and you can feel it's harder to turn now that's okay then we have the dust seal goes down over the top a little fella there then this fella sits down there this looks like it's got a little bend in it I don't know I'll leave it there it may be what they'd like to have on there. We have a shake proof washer. Now in the kit they give you a nylon lock nut for these but look if there's nothing wrong with these nuts just go with them. That might be where you can have a lock nut for this shaft, this bolt that we have missing on. So we let that turn right over there, nip him up firm Yeah, that's nice and tight there. And you can see it's just got a little kick up there, but I don't know about that. We might be able to twist that with a shifter on the tractor or something. I don't want to play with it because that may be how it needs to be. Now the stopper shaft, it's the exact same setup. Try and get the O-rings down into the two grooves.
getting slippery fingers now. Yeah, get down over there. Beautiful. Okay. Once again, just a drop of oil on it. Now, you can pop this in. And that little tit that goes to the side, it doesn't, that way is wrong, that way is correct. So now we pop this, oh. Hang on, we put this on. We drop that down over the top. We put our shake proof washer on. And then we put our little nut on. That's a bit firmer. We've probably got the nut spools up, mixed up, but anyway, doesn't matter. Okay, so originally there was a spring between here and that hole there that it does two things. It helps your stopper return when you push your stopper to return. It gives it a bit of feel sort of thing. So if it's halfway, it'll, it'll go right back to run. And it pulls this throttle shaft back against that screw that we've got missing here, this fella here. So the, the spring pulls it back against your idle speed screw and brings him right back. So look, that is all you need to do to this top cover. And the other thing, if you remember I, I couldn't, um, I was trying to tell you about this top cover and the spring come off and I didn't see where it was. On the side of the pump there's a number four and I think the number four means go in the end one. I, I, I reckon I could see a mark on the end one here. Let's have a look. That one there, that's how I think it should be going. Now, what if I've got that wrong now? Well, there is a sheet that tells you the position. Um, it tells you the position that it should be, but, okay, if it's, if I've got it in a hole way up here, but what that does, that pulls on the governor harder. So when we back at idle here, our tractor's revving too much. And when we go to open it up, it'll rev way faster than it should ever, ever do. So once you drop it back to idle, instead of being at 750 RPM, it'll probably be 1,200. And when you get it up here, it'll be too fast. If it's too loose, what happens then is that when you open the throttle flat out, instead of being, say, 2300 RPM, it'll only go to about 1500 RPM. Then when you idle back, because the governor tension's not there, the tractor will probably stop. So um, I've mixed them up in the past, I've buggered them up, and that's the symptom. So if you've done it, you idle back and it stops all the time and you don't get full revs, you've probably got the spring on in the wrong place. Um, if it won't idle, you know, the idle's 1200 RPM and it wants to over rev, well, you probably have it too tight. So just keep that in mind. I've done that in the past. <laughs> I don't feel bad, I do this for a living. <laughs> so I should be coming good soon. 43 years and um, actually it's more, 40, 48. Holy do I'm getting old. Um, yeah, but I've, I've made just about every mistake in the book, so don't feel bad. Um, this. Um, I probably invented some of the mistakes and that bleeder goes in there later so but what we'll do now we'll get the gasket ready and we'll reposition the camera and we'll pop this on the pump eh? okay you can see I've got the gasket on the top here now the gasket actually sits into the gap in the steel plate there so make sure it's clean 
make sure it's nice and clean. It sits in both sides. I've got the stopper. Stopper rods just there, nice and free. Make sure that's in. Now, if you remember our pump had the, had the spring in the, the little hole, the hole furthest from the lever there. And this is always a bit of a fiddle. Um, you have the rivet and the spring, and on our pump it was in the middle hole here. So what we need to do is bring the top down Try and get the spring up that end. Bring the top down. Hook the spring on. Just like that. And then as we bring the top down, we line the bolt holes up. Actually, we need to zoom out a little bit, don't we, I think? We'll bring the camera a bit further back. And when we come down, we have to keep in mind where our stopper is in relationship to that little hole, the little hook in the, in the stopper. And you can actually feel that. You can feel with the tension on the stopper, when you pull the stopper, you can feel it pushing against the spring. That's how you know you've got it in the right place. So I'm confident that's in the right place. That should all sit down okay. Now there's some little washers here. Where are they? Okay, we have these little Composite washers, little fibrous sort of things. So they just go in there. The acorn nuts come down over the top. And we just nip these up firm. Now I see a lot of pumps where they start leaking and people really hook into these screws and they break them. I think we've got them in at Queensland Tractor Spears there, but um, okay. Now. That's still nice and free. You can feel the spring on it, so we know the spring's still hooked up. When we hold tension, it gets halfway. We can feel it pushing against the stopper. We know that's not, that's right. So I think that's a good thing. And that's a view from the top. So you can see it's springy there. So we know it's pulling against the governor. When we hold this flat out, Hold this. As you bring this, it goes easy and you just feel it touch something there. So we know that the stopper's there. We can test that later, but that should be okay. That's that bit done for the moment. Let's have a look at what happens in this end cap now, eh? Okay, we're down the back end of the pump, the inlet end, and I'm just, I just use a little bit of CRC 556. It's just a little lube for here. So you remember this end cap, the inlet faced up like that and the little roll pin there was on this side. So what we need to do is have a look which way this went. So okay, we have the roll pin on this side but what we also look for is you can often see a little witness mark, that little mark there and that lines up with the hole down the bottom there that lets fuel into the head. 
So that can drop down there like that and the roll pin here that stops that from turning because this little it has these little veins inside and they run back and forth so we need to pop the veins in one goes up one way one goes the other and this just transfer it's a little transfer pump that transfers fuel into the head of the pump and I often just put a bit of the possum pee in there and you might be able to see if I turn the other end of the pump and hold this you can see that the veins go in and out and that's what does the pump and it actually goes this way and as we get fuel coming in it compresses it and that gap gets smaller and smaller then when it comes to around the bottom there that gap's got small enough that it has to push the fuel up that um, up the inner passage there to the head now this is sealed with a quad ring and when the time comes we pop this on there like that and do it up but in the meantime I'll shift that out of the way there's quite a bit going on in this fella here so I might drop the camera down a bit and we'll have a look at this right so this is the end cap this is where the fuel comes in and there's an order for everything to go in here so there's a little hair spring with a line across it and it goes in first now we have a little plunger here and that plunger actually needs a bit of a tidy up but when the when the plunger comes down to the bottom the spring with this little line across it there it stops that from getting pushed out the end of this tube here now what happens over time you can see on one end the spring gets slightly worn so you can just turn it over and there's no trouble there so the very first thing to go into that pump is that spring and it has to sit straight up and down oh I don't think you'll be able to see that no sit straight up and down inside there now the important part about I'll just push it out with this the important part about this is that it must slide up and down in there freely under its own weight and that's just a little bit firm at the moment and I like to make sure this is really clean make sure there's no little burrs or anything like that on it that's just normal non-chlorinated braking cleaner well there you go um, what we're looking for is you can see that there it drops in and out under its own steam you can see it's, it moves freely in that ball that's what we're looking for there so that's good okay we'll pop this down over there I might put a bit of they seem to dry out in the packets those fellas I think Work that down. They're quite touchy, really, these things. If you leave it on a slight little angle there, you'll get it right down without it sticking out over the edge. So you can see the little plunger. Now, usually, I'll just give that another tidy up just in case there's something got in there I 
and that just drops straight out. See that? And that's how you want it. So okay, with that spring down the bottom there, we have to push this right the way down as far as it'll go, keeping the plunger inside it. And you can feel it just clicks into position. It can go down there. Then we should have a brand new filter. The filter sits down on top of that collar. Then this big heavy spring, it goes down with that little that little rivet. That little rivet goes down towards the spring that holds the shuttle in. The little shuttle valve. So the spring comes and pops up against that. Then once that's done, all we need to do then is get the end cap and put a nice new copper washer on it. And screw that down. We'll just put a little red plug might be a green plug. We'll just put that in there to keep the rubbish from getting in there. So that should be ready to go. So when we bring our pump back over, there's not much more we can do to that. That's ready to go. So that sits down on top of here, making sure that that roll pin is in the collar on the outer rotor of the pump for you and we just pop these little screws in Clean up, try and keep my hands, I always get finger marks on things. Let me just pull that down against the rubber. That should be okay. Now you might notice over here, I got a new screw and a lock nut for the idle speed. So we'll screw that in. How much was sticking out before? About so much. All right, that's just a starting point. We won't get too excited with that. Just do that lock nut up. So we can pop a pop a red plug in the breather in or in the case drain here. Now with these injector pipe unions. Um, what I do with them, I, I have to clean them up yet, but um, what I do with them, I put them in, I take the copper washers off, the kits come with steel washers. Now, the steel washers are the way to go, um, the copper washers seem to loosen off over time a little bit, and we put the steel washers, but what I do, I clean all this up, and I probably won't show you that just now, I clean them up, I put them in there, but I don't tighten them up. Now, I don't like to tighten them up until they actually become um, part of the tractor, 
And what that does is where the injector lines come down here, we can actually seat the injector lines, get it nipped up firm, and then bring this down. And so with everything just firm so it can all move, we can tighten it all up there. So for the moment, I'm not going to pop them on. Um, no real need. Now this side, I suppose the other thing we need to do is this bleed screw. We need a copper washer for the bleed screw here. And that just bleeds the air out of the top of the pump. And this little side plate here. Now, on other pumps where the circlip's there for timing, you would probably need to pull this out again and have a look. Um, on this one, there's no need. We, we can't actually do anything in there on this International. So... I'll give that a bit of a squirt. Tidy that up and... So there's nothing more we can do in there as regard to timing or anything like that. So we'll just pop this on there. Just nip that up. The reason I had that wide at the pump is on the side here is because that's where you hot it up, which I've showed you earlier in the video. So that's it. That's all we need to do to that pump. Um, that will go on the machine and run. Now, like I say, these injector unions here. The little ones like that I'll tighten up. Um, I'll tighten right up with the steel washers though. Now if you find the steel washers leak, the secret to making them not leak is with the tractor running, loosen them, tighten them, loosen them, tighten them, and loosen them till they flush any dirt out and get going and nip them up while the tractor's running. Um, you'll have one cylinder comes out at a time, you know, comes out of firing at a time, but, but that's about it. So that's going to do us for the 434 injection pump. Um, like I said, I need to clean these up, but I'll do them off camera. There's no need to see all that. And that's it. That should get you going, hopefully. Okay. Here's a little afterthought video. You'll notice that I've got some um, CRC 556 down in through the pump just to bleed it all, make sure it's all lubricated. I've got the throttle held open with a little plastic cap and I've got the stopper off and when I put the Allen key up the back of the pump you can see it shooting little dribbles out of the out of the guts there now fill that up again it. So now we'll pull the stopper on. Nothing there at all. Open the stopper up. There we go. So I'm pretty confident that pump will work. We'll bolt it straight on. The little bit of CRC in there will bleed through quickly with the diesel and we'll have a, a good running engine I'm sure.